Now, throughout the Ramadan month, TVRI World has spoken to a number of Indonesian diaspora to talk about their unique Ramadan experiences. This afternoon, we have also with us from Zoom, we have Murniati from the Philippines and also Azizuddin, who is living in Bangkok, Thailand. Both are members of Indonesian diaspora who's going to talk with us about their challenges and how they adapt to their new environment. So, Mabuhay Murniati and Sawadika Azizuddin, thank you for joining us on Focus today. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. All right, now first let me go to Nia, who's in the Philippines. Nia, can you tell us more about where exactly in the Philippines are you living right now? And what is the reason of your stay? And where are you from exactly in Indonesia? Basically, please allow us to know you a little bit more better. Go ahead, Nia. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Murnieti Manuike. You can call me Nia. I'm now stay in Davao City. Uh, why I'm living here? Because I take my bachelor. Uh, I take uh, medical laboratory science, and this is my uh, fourth year college. All right, thank you, Nia. And how about you, Azizuddin? Is this your first yeah. Ramadan in Bangkok? How long have you stayed there and what are you doing there exactly? Yeah, howdy, uh, My name is Azizuddin and I'm from Jombang, East Java. And right now, this is my uh, doctoral study in biotech. Actually, I'm li uh, living in uh, Bangkok, actually in Bangmut area. And this is my second year, my second time also in Ramadan in Bangkok. <laughs> All right. So it's not the first Ramadan abroad for both of you. So I'm sure you have a lot of unique stories to tell us. Now, both of you, Nia and Azizuddin, you live in countries that don't have a majority of Muslim people living there. So that must be quite a change from what you used to back home. Mm -hmm. Maybe Nia could tell us first. How is it like spending uh, Ramadan month in the Philippines? Is there still a, a Muslim society that you can spend the Ramadan with? Uh, for my past two years in Manila, it's not really like in Indonesia because it's the majority there. The people is uh, Catholic, is Christian. But here in Davao, I can feel like as a Muslim uh, place because in Davao is the majority uh, religion it's Muslim so uh, I found it like it's easy and then I can also uh, pray nearby here because the most here it's just nearby my house and then I can also go to KJRE so it's good okay that's interesting to know so in Davao city actually the majority are Muslims so that should be easier for you then to adapt right Nia how about you, Aziz? Yeah. How is it like doing Ramadan and fasting in Bangkok, Thailand, where we know for a fact that Muslims are not the majority there? Yeah, actually, uh, the majority is Buddhism. And but, but in Bangmut, in my area, uh, around my campus, there are so many uh, Muslims uh, from Africa and from Middle East and also from uh, Patani or South uh, Thailand. So in my area, yeah, so many Muslim and so many mas so many masjid in my area actually. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's not hard for you to find for a place to do traweh and also to commune with other Muslims. And it must be interesting to learn more about different Muslim cultures from different countries. That's fascinating. Now I want to learn more about how you perform key rituals during your Ramadan month like uh, your sour and also your break fasting. How do you do that? How do you prepare the food for pre-dawn meals and then for iftar? Maybe Nia can start us off? Okay, for me, if it, I'm not that lazy, I will just order, like <laughs> here in the Davao, it's so, uh, it's easy to order Indo food. And then if not, I will just cook by myself. And then if I want to open fasting or Buka puasa, I can go to easily to go to KJRI because it's just nearby my apartment. And then I can go uh, the most here in the Philippines also is just nearby my apartment. And right. in the most also, they give uh, free food for us. 
Oh, that's very generous of the mask. Very convenient for you, Nia. How about you, Aziz? How do you do pre-dawn meals and iftar in Bangkok? Yeah, the interesting thing in Bangkok, uh, because we have a free iftar, uh, all of the masjid provide us free iftar and free uh, sahur. So uh, 30 days, one month, we have a free iftar, free sahur. So very easy to, to be a Muslim in Bangkok, actually. Wow, not only you get to still perform key rituals in Ramadan, but I suspect that you managed to stay on budget as well. Yeah? You don't need to spend as much <laughs> for food because every, everything yeah. is provided. <laughs> now, I want to learn more about unique Ramadan rituals or Ramadan traditions that you've learned while staying in this uh, new country that you're staying at right now. So, Nia, did you learn anything about different Ramadan traditions that is done by the Muslim people uh, from the Philippines, especially in Davos City? Is there something you can tell us about those kind of unique traditions? Actually, it's almost the same in, the, in Indonesia, but maybe it's the food, it's different. And then, like, in Indonesia, if you want to open our fasting or break the fasting, we will eat, like, the takjil. But here in the Philippines, they just give us, like, really the meal there is a chicken rice and also there is kurma so like for me okay it's not easy to find the takjil here <laughs> but i can easily find the food okay so no takjil means no takjil war takjil war in indonesia right now is all the rage i don't know if you heard about this <laughs> how about you aziz is there any unique ramadan traditions that you've learned from your new friends from other muslim countries um, for me so far, there's no difference between Indonesia and Thailand, actually. But, you know, I feel like uh, this remedy is very quiet. Uh, after Taraweh, there is no uh, recitation. And just after uh, Taraweh, we leave uh, our masjid and go to bed. Yes. <laughs> I think this is not quite different between Indonesia and Thailand. All right, now last question before I let you go so you can prepare for your upcoming iftar in a few hours. Murni, uh, Nia, I'm sorry, you mentioned that there's no takjil uh, in the Philippines, uh, which is quite in abundance when you compare it to Indonesia. Is that one thing you miss the most about Ramadan from home? Can you tell us what do you miss the most about Ramadan in Indonesia? Yes, of course, I, I really miss the food in Indonesia, especially <laughs> like donut and then because i'm living in manado so i miss like bubur manado michakala i really miss that because if here i will make it it's really like it really takes time for me but if in indonesia i easily to go out just buy for me just buy it yeah mandanonis food they are very delicious but quite hard to make so i understand <laughs> the difficulty that you have there to enjoy mandanonis food how about you, Aziz? What is the one thing you miss the most about Ramadan in Jombang? Of course, I miss my family. Aww. I miss my, my mom. And I only pecel, pecel and tempe. <laughs> Very hard to find in Bangkok, in Thailand. Pecel and tempe is the best food, I think, in Jombang. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so far, Nia and Aziz, I think you've given our viewers a lot of inspiration for their menu, for their iftar menu in a few hours from now. Thank you so much for that. And while we're at it, we're talking about home. Maybe before truly I'll let you go, maybe you can uh, give some messages for your friends and families back home who might be watching right now. Nia, please go ahead. Okay, I want to say... Hi, my family. I really miss you guys. I hope we can meet very soon and then stay healthy there. I miss you. All right, Aziz, your chance. Yep, only stay, he stay healthy and we will meet soon. I will go back very soon. <laughs> All right, Murniati living in the Philippines and Azizuddin living in Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you so much for sharing with us your time and also your experiences living abroad during Ramadan. Hope you get to enjoy the rest of Ramadan and hope you get to go home soon for Idul Fitri. Until then, take care. Thank you. Thank you.